we always try to get together to figure out how to address the energy access challenge. How do we get more people power? How do we get more people clean water? And what ended up happening is when the transition talks were being discussed, you know, we're like, let's talk about something a little different. So there's a ceremony we we're at in, in the community of Shanta where in the middle of the night we're watching a fire. And we start getting to talking about, you know, large scale development and why not us, you know, what, what. And what was interesting is like, at the time the coal plant was running coal to Navajo generating station. And we could see the train kind of going down the middle of the valley, uh, middle of the night. And we're like, man, like if we don't get involved in, in this discussion, you know, we don't have a say whether or not it's beneficial to our communities. And this plant will close and our community will feel the impacts but they're going to build something else somewhere else. And, and, you know, if we want to hold these one companies and, you know, institutions accountable, like it's got to be under our own control. And so we reached out to a few initial investors and we cited a few initial projects and brought in and recruited, you know, a very strategic team of like-minded and, experienced folks to, to get what Navajo Power's vision was, which is we wanted to bring clean energy to communities in a different way. We wanted to be inclusive, but also work on this idea of community benefits. And what we've come to realize is Navajo Power, you know, envisions success with communities, you know, in terms of like, although there's a expectation that they have to be profitable, profit isn't the driver. What, what's the driver is what the legacy is of these projects because that's what we saw missing from coal. When they picked up those smokestacks, when they you know, covered up those coal mines, the legacy it leaves behind is just fractured community. And that felt to us very, again, problematic. And we didn't want solar or wind or whatever clean tech we could bring to have the same effect because our communities had been traumatized enough. And so we thought, okay, well, how do we get involved? And so it really started with bringing together a lot of allies who had been kind of advising the space, very you know, seasoned people to say, okay, can you get us into certain rooms? Because <laughs> we know we can talk about this. We can build, again, a movement, but also a, um, a very like intentional business model that, that highlights the need for taking care of communities first where you impact and then exporting power.